that has never failed me, not one time. And I don't understand why writers are so against just having a little bit of empathy and getting off their horse and being like, hey, it's okay that you're scared. Like, let's go over and I'll show you what this is and show you that you don't have to be afraid of it. You know, be a little empathetic. Hey, bitch, how are you? Today, we're back, and we're back to drag some bitches. <laughs> you know, for some reason, you guys love it when I react to other people's writing, and this is something I don't usually do. I don't normally react to just people riding and making bad choices unless it's abusive because the thing is all of us as equestrians we all make mistakes we're all learning we're all growing it's okay to not have good equitation from time to time it's okay to make mistakes with your riding so I hope that you guys take what I say with a grain of salt and we can all get some constructive criticism out of this video but before we get into today's fail reaction video I want to thank today's amazing sponsor which is again pet canva oh I love them. I've been working with Pet Canva so much and I just genuinely love this company. I love the products that they've sent me. As you guys can see, uh, I have this amazing canvas of Link which is up on my bookshelf. It's in my background of every video and Pet Canva graciously made it for me. It's such amazing quality, seriously. If you are unfamiliar, Pet Canva is the leading leader in personalized pet products with over 100,000 happy customers. You can trust their process products and 100% happiness guarantee. Pet Canva allows you to immortalize any pet as a gift for yourself or a friend or family member. Seriously, I think all of these products are just amazing for gifting your family members and even a few family members of mine have gifted me products from Pet Canva because I just love having photos of my animals and just these beautiful portraits and I even have a blanket with Link's face on it, <laughs> which my husband is not too much of a fan of but that's okay. I just like to put my animals on literally everything. The process is so simple and easy. You can upload your photos and receive artwork for approval within 48 hours on the products of your choices. Use your personal portal to approve artwork and follow the progress of your order. Choose from a variety of premier products, blankets, towels, clothing, canvases, posters, phone cases, pillows, tote bags, mugs, puzzles, and so much more, you guys. They have literally everything you could ever want. So guys, click my link down below and use the code Raleigh for 25% off your order. Really, honestly, supporting them helps support my channel, so I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much again to Pet Canva for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. Mm. I love horse fail videos. You know, I haven't reacted to a horse fail in a while. I'm surprised that none of my bad riding videos ever ended up in a horse fail video because I had some pretty bad fails that I posted to the internet and none of them ever ended up online on any of the fail videos, but you know. <laughs> Okay, I just want to say, starting off, girl, we got to talk about this. A lot of horses react negatively after a jump and they start bucking and kicking. Sometimes it is excitement, but a lot of times it is pain on their back and their spinal cord, their musculoskeletal system. So it's important to regularly get your horses back checked and make sure that when you're jumping them, you're not slamming down on their back because that's why you see so many horses that buck and kick and um, want to you know, get you off after they come down from a jump. It's because the rider is slamming down on their back and it hurts them and um, they're, they're probably in pain or they're uncomfortable. Sometimes it could even just be the saddle discomfort that's pinching them when they're jumping if your saddle is not fitted properly. So if your horse is doing this, obviously it could be excitement, but most of the time it's probably discomfort. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so you can tell, you know, we're going to rewind just a sec. You can tell the difference between when horses are just spooking, when they have energy, versus when something's actually wrong. You know, this one is a pretty good example of it's probably the cinch, the girth, the saddle pad, the saddle. There's probably something pinching the horse. You know, and this is not even indicative of these riders being bad riders. I don't think that that's the case in any of these videos. But all too often, you see horses behaving this way because there's a tack malfunction, they're being pinched somewhere, they're uncomfortable, they maybe have back pain. That's something that you see very regularly. So make sure when you ride your horse, you ride with correctly fitted tack, you make sure that your tack is not pinching your horse, uh, you make sure everything's in the correct position, and you also want to make sure that you're riding to the best of your ability to take the pressure off their back. Most riders don't fit their saddles properly, and I'm just gonna be totally honest. I mean, we all know this, okay? We're not stupid. Most riders don't take the time to actually have their saddles professionally fitted. They buy a saddle off Craigslist and they say, oh, this looks okay, I guess. I'm not trying to point fingers, but like more than half of the people who board at my barn don't have properly fitted saddles. And it's like, it's something that I hound them every day about. I'm like, no, you you have to understand how important this is to fit your saddle right. And most people are just like, uh, I'll use a half pad, I'll use a riser pad, I'll do this, I'll do that. And it's like, no, you should just buy a properly fitted saddle. <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> oh my god, I know I don't want to stop it every time, but I get a lot of people who ask me what to do when a horse takes off on them. First of all, you need to practice emergency dismounts. I've had to do two emergency dismounts in my life. I've been riding horses for 18 years now, and I've only ever had to do two emergency dismounts, uh, neither of which I got hurt. So if you learn how to do emergency dismounts correctly, there's some videos on YouTube of people who uh, will show you how to do it. But basically you just, you fall off the side of the horse and you do a controlled fall. So you roll with the horse in the direction the horse is going, but you wanna fall off far enough away from the animal to where it doesn't trample you. But trust me, you might get a few bruises, a few scrapes, but you're gonna feel so much better doing an emergency dismount than staying on the horse and then being thrown. But if if you can't do an emergency dismount, then turn your horse's head in a circle. Just reach all the way down the reins, which I've had to do this before too with some young and naive horses that spooked. Uh, reach all the way down the reins and try to grab directly at the bridle and pull the horse's head all the way sideways, touching the girth or the cinch area where your thigh is and make them do a super tight circle, right? So when you turn your horse's head, you disengage their rear end. And what this does is it causes the horse to not only slow down, which to be fair, this can be dangerous, uh, depending on what speed. If you're galloping, I don't recommend this. If you're galloping, I recommend an emergency dismount. That's probably the safest option for you. But if you're cantering or anything less than a canter, the safest thing is most likely to just grab the horse's bridle, turn the head all the way sideways, and um, then get the horse to do some tight circles and dismount. That's the best thing and the safest thing to do. What shocks me is so many equestrians don't have emergency procedures for when shit goes south and it, it shocks me because it will go south you know every equestrian has experienced stuff like this <laughs> I mean, that one was definitely the rider's fault. I'm sorry. Anytime there's a horse that is not jumping properly, it's almost always the rider. I mean, sometimes it is the horse's fault where the horse, you know, messes up their stride length and it's impossible to judge the distance to the jump because you can't count on the horse to have a consistent stride. Sometimes that happens, but almost always it's the rider's fault when it comes down to jumping because a lot of times the rider is hesitant or the rider judges the distance wrong and sets the horse up to jump poorly and then you know shit like that happens where your horse could be seriously injured but i digress wait i gotta rewind that oh my god okay 
that was definitely the rider's fault. You know, if you slow that down, you can see that she was riding very poorly. She was holding the horse back and the horse couldn't move his head. The rider was slamming down on his back. I mean, very bad equitation, bad balance. And then what happened is the horse just reared up because he was probably just sick of it. And it looks like he lost his footing and she lost, uh, well, she lost everything because he fucking threw her. So, I mean, here's the thing. We all make mistakes, but it's important to acknowledge as equestrians when it's your fault. I tell people all the time that constructive criticism is good for you. It's how you grow as a person. I've done stupid shit on horses, I've made mistakes, and it's important to learn from those mistakes and grow as a person. <laughs> That saddle looked like it didn't even fit that horse, to be honest. Also, a lot of these saddles are way too high on the horse or they don't fit the horse. And a lot of times, you know, jumpers tighten their tack ridiculously and the horse has like no room where the girth area is. I mean, seriously, I've seen some jumpers that tighten their girth so much that it actually restricts circulation where the heart girth is. So what the fuck, dude, what are you guys doing? <laughs> also, also, uh, this is not just exclusive to back pain. This also could be a myriad of different issues. This could be sore feet. It could be sore tendons, ligaments, uh, anything like that, joint problems. You know, hunter jumper horses tend to have a long bucket list of issues. <laughs> Dude, dude, no. If your horse is acting that way where they're consistently backing up, they're freaking out, instead of putting them in a situation like that where they're likely to trip, just get off, you know? J just have your horse stand still and just get off. Obviously something's going wrong, you can double check your tack, maybe they're scared of something, you can walk them over to it so they get used to it. But a lot of these issues, when I see horses that spook or get scared, I don't understand why there's this stigma for riders that, oh, if I get off, then it teaches the horse that, you know, if he does that, then I'll get off every time. So then he'll keep doing that. So I get off. That's literally not true. I've never met a horse in my life where they spooked or they got really scared and I got off to comfort them and show them that what it was was not scary. And then they pretended to be scared in the future so I would get off them. Like, that's never happened to me. That has never failed me, not one time. And I don't understand why riders are so against just having a little bit of empathy and getting off their horse and being like, hey, it's okay that you're scared. Like, let's go over and I'll show you what this is and show you that you don't have to be afraid of it. You know, be a little empathetic. Okay, all right, that was the last clip, but holy shit. There's a lot to unpack right there. So first of all, either that horse is not trained at all, and that horse needs to go back to basic groundwork and ground training because he's not used to a saddle, um, because that's not normal. That behavior is indicative of an animal that has not been trained properly to accept the weight and feel of a saddle, or 
the horse has a rock stuck in its cinch saddle something's pinching the horse somewhere maybe the circulation's cut off by the girth um, or the saddle is pinching them the saddle doesn't fit right the way that horse is moving because the rider seem to be riding fine that is indicative of a pain response or a um novice response none of these videos are indicative of a horse at fault these videos are literally just horses that are in pain and kind of telling the riders that hey i'm uncomfortable i'm in pain i'm scared whatever riders would be a lot better if they learned how to listen to their animals more and be more in tune with their animal because dude my horse never bucks if I take my horse out and he starts bucking, I immediately get off and I check everything. Like, I know that something is wrong if he starts bucking when I take him out there. It's not really a normal thing for a well-trained or properly trained horse to just go out and start randomly bucking. Even if you're at a higher level, sometimes horses will bunny hop if they're excited, but I've never seen an excited horse that just like starts bucking full blown with a rider on. Now that's not to say that that never happens because I'm sure that it does, but the vast majority of time like when you see these types of bucks these are not indicative of horses that are just bad or excited some of them were but most of them were indicative of pain or discomfort um, either with the rider or with the reins some of these horses were probably shaking their heads because of the bit pressure in the mouth you know when riders get scared they get tense and they tighten their legs and they tighten their reins and then the horse feels that intensity and it escalates the situation so anytime your horse behaves this way, the appropriate response is to relax, relax your muscles, relax your arms. The more relaxed you are, the better you can stay balanced when your horse goes south and just starts acting a fool. And then you can slow your horse down, calm them down with just nice, you know, strokes on their neck and just saying, whoa, and comforting them. Once you get them to a stop, then you can analyze your tack. You can check if they have a rock in their foot. Um, you can check if they have a bruise in their oral cavity. There's a myriad of things that you can go through to make sure that your horse is doing okay. But what amazes me is how these riders keep riding until they're literally bucked off. Like that girl at the end, what are you doing? The horse bucked like 20 times and not once did she consider getting off the horse and checking to make sure the horse was okay. She literally waited until the horse bucked her off. So yeah, basically the point of this video is just don't be an asshole to your horses and make sure to stay in tune with them and understand when your horse is hurting horses talk to people you know all of these horses are trying to tell their riders that they're uncomfortable or um you know something's not right or something's going wrong and it's amazing to me how riders can be so good but so disconnected from their animals at the same time you really need to listen to your horse and what they're saying to you and 99 percent of these situations can be completely avoided okay guys that is all that i have for today's video thank you so much for watching remember guys comment down below what you thought of these videos um any specific fails that you found interesting or that you wanted to talk about it really helps out this channel with the algorithm so i very much appreciate it but also thank you again to Pet Canva for sponsoring this video. Remember to use my code Raleigh for 25% off. Otherwise, I love you and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!